Meanwhile, back in the Inquisitor's library, Keo needed to let off steam and was wrestling with Havoc. Although dwarfed by Havoc's size, Keo was putting up a good fight. Sadly for Keo, every time he thought he had him, Havoc would use his feline reflexes to end up behind Keo, pushing him to the ground. Every so often a plume of rock dust rose to the sound of a winded Keo crashing to the ground. I'm going to topple you if it's the last thing I do, muttered Keo as he pushed against Havoc. I'm immortal, replied Havoc as he began to push back, baring his teeth. I've got plenty of time. How about you? Ha! I've got all the time I need. Ah! Keo's confident reply was muted by Havoc catching him off balance and once again throwing him to the ground. Freya felt she also needed a break but decided that wrestling an immortal was not for her. Instead, she spoke to the Inquisitor, who was holding the Book of Morpheus and Minerva in the palm of his giant hand. So what does the book tell you? asked Freya timidly. Do you believe in the book? he inquired, without looking away from its pages. It did lead us to you, and it appears to have sent Requiem into a spin. Turning away to stare into space, she continued in a more sombre tone. Then there's what it told me. I don't know. I'm uncomfortable with it as it's supposed to tell you how to attain your heart's deepest desire. But it seems to tell me the opposite. The opposite, you say? replied the Inquisitor with a raised eyebrow, now looking intently at Freya. Yes, she said sadly, looking down as she played with her nails. Instead of getting what I want... It tells me that I must lose him. Uh, it. Lose it. Freya looked embarrassed, but it was not enough to mask her sadness which shone through as a beacon of despair. Sitting back, the Inquisitor understood everything. Ah, I see. You must lose the one you love. A terrible fate indeed, at least at first glance. With tears in her eyes, Freya found herself unable to reply as the end of the Inquisitor's sentence passed her by. The Inquisitor leaned very close to Freya, his tusks narrowly missing her head. I assure you that this book does tell you how to attain your deepest desires. What you have to do is truly understand your desire. Then these words may not cause such anguish. Freya made fists with her hands to compose herself. So, the fifth gate does exist, then? You all know it to be true. If not you would not have made it this far. I believe your Grand Master will crack it soon enough, with a little guidance from Pathfinder. The Inquisitor looked pointedly over at Eurosil, sitting on the floor, conversing with Pathfinder, who had taken penguin form in order to be at eye level. I'm missing something, aren't I? asked Eurosil. Pathfinder, who could not speak in normal animal form, nodded his head vigorously. But what? Eurosil muttered to himself, tapping his fingers on his chin. We could be here for years looking through books. Dougal has just found so many. Oh well, I suppose all we can do is plough on, he concluded with a sigh. Pathfinder shot out a webbed foot and held the book down so that Eurosil couldn't lift it. No? No book? No ploughing? Eurosil asked in confusion. Pathfinder closed his eyes and shook his head. Then I don't know what to do, moaned Eurosil in frustration. Pathfinder flung out a flipper and slapped the side of Eurosil's face. What was that for? Physical abuse is not the answer, certainly not from a penguin, Eurosil cried in shock. Rubbing his jaw, he noticed that Pathfinder's flipper was still held out, apparently pointing at the computer. What? The computer? I'm no good with those things, and we're a bit short on five-year-olds to help out, said Eurosil with dismay. Seeing that Pathfinder was unwavering, Eurosil heaved himself up from the floor and started to make his way to the computer, muttering, The fifth gate, the fifth gate, as Pathfinder waddled behind him. As Eurosil passed Geo, Havoc sent him flying again to cries of, What? from Geo. What? Eurosil muttered to himself, picking up on Geo's cries. What? 
What the fifth gate? What is the fifth gate? As he passed Freya and the Inquisitor, he overheard Freya talking. The location is great, but the interior... Uracil picked up on only one part of the conversation, one word, location. Location, Uracil muttered. Location? What location? As he sat down at the computer, Uracil gave out a triumphant yell. What is the location of the fifth gate? he said rapturously. Looking down at the penguin, he patted Pathfinder on the head. Oh, you are good. We were simply asking the wrong question. Pathfinder flung his flippers and head in the air as if to say, Finally! as Uracil turned to the computer. Now, he said thoughtfully, if only I knew how to use a... Uh, what is one of these things again? Picking up the mouse and staring at it, he asked Pathfinder, A rat? Pathfinder shook his head in dismay. A, a, a weasel? I know it's some kind of small scurrying mammal, although the reason escapes me to this day. Ah, no matter. If I wave it around enough, I should get that arrow thingy in the box. Uracil held the mouse in the air and shook it before pausing to look where the arrow had moved to. Ah, oh, it's gone. I've lost it, he said in alarm. Oh no, it's hiding in the corner over there. Very sneaky. I think another shake is called for. Uracil shook and watched, shook and watched, until finally he got the cursor into the query box. Right, he said breathlessly. Now all I need to do is type. Looking down at the keyboard, he muttered, Yes, keys. They make the alphabet, but in such a mystical form. Again, I ask why, but sadly I fear it is a mystery I will never solve. As Girasil put the mouse down, the cursor moved out of the box. As he hadn't clicked in it, any typing was now futile. Unknowingly, he typed slowly. When he had finally finished, he looked up to see what he had done. Nothing! He screamed in a high-pitched voice. But where are the words I so painstakingly wrote? What trickery is this? Pathfinder was at his wit's end. Taking command of the mouse with his flipper, he clicked in the box before proceeding to wave Uracil to one side and type, What is the location of the fifth gate? with his flippers, much faster than Uracil had done with his fingers, and hit Enter. With an elated Yahoo! Dougal backflipped into the cavern for the spiders to throw him just three books, which he promptly gave to Uracil. Uracil read the pages that Dougal had opened for him. The fifth gate pizzeria can be found at... No, not that one. Tossing it to one side, he picked up the next book. Rock on down with the fifth gate fan club at... No, not that one either. The last book was unlike anything Uracil had seen before. Now this is interesting, he said as he peered at the book, intrigued. Tapping it, he continued to think aloud. Its cover is made of a black shiny metal. In fact, even the pages are metal. How very curious. Oh, I do like this nice deep-set lettering of the title. Vega's Chronicle. Hmm, doesn't ring a bell. Turning to Pathfinder, Uracil showed him the book. Do you know anything about this book? Do these etchings that swirl about the cover mean anything? Pathfinder slowly closed his eyes and bowed his head before waddling over to the Inquisitor, changing into his humanised form as he did so. Indeed, good idea. The Inquisitor will know. It is his library after all, said Uracil, following on and handing the Inquisitor the book. Could you tell us about this book? The Inquisitor slammed the Book of Morpheus and Minerva shut and took the much smaller Vega's Chronicle from Uracil. Well done, he bellowed with a smile. You're doing well. Vega's Chronicle provides a wealth of knowledge if you want to know about the making of the Four Gates and, of course, more importantly for you, the Fifth Gate. Freya smiled. Good going, Uracil. I knew you could do it. Pausing, she turned back to the Inquisitor. Hang on. If you knew this book would help us, why didn't you give it to us in the first place? Oh, 
Elephant memories are not as good as people are led to believe, especially at my age, the Inquisitor said innocently as he leaned back in his chair. Just then, there was an almighty crash and a yell of triumph from Gio as he finally threw Havoc to the ground. Gio looked down at Havoc with hands in the air, calling for admiration. Freya called out in dismay. Thanks, Havoc. We're never going to hear the end of this now. Gio bounded towards them like an overexcited schoolchild. Freya looked at him and asked calmly, So, how was it? Waving his hand dismissively, as he leaned on the arm of the Inquisitor's mighty chair, he panted, Oh, he's a big pussycat, really. Nothing to it. Nodding to the book, he asked breathlessly, So, what does it say? I don't know. I can't open it, replied Eurysil anxiously. Everyone now turned to the Inquisitor, who obliged their silent questioning. Vega roamed the world since before the formation of the Four Gates and the Alliance. He stood as a neutral observer and catalogued events. Upon witnessing the utility of the Fifth Gate, he knew that he needed to protect his account. Gesturing to his archways, he continued, As you can see, I only have one book that tells the truth of what transpired. Even I could not prevent the annihilation of history. Wow, I never knew our people could be like that. All gates, even the South Gate, always appear to do the best thing for its people, Freya said in shock. Which is exactly why they eroded history throughout time. It is for the best, otherwise the balance in which you live would be lost, and, with it, your world and perhaps others, replied the Inquisitor thoughtfully. Gil heaved himself up off the arm of the chair. We need to know the truth. We know too much to be silent and not enough to be content. If not for our own sakes, then for Requiem's. A little knowledge can be dangerous, and if this eats away at him, it could have just as dire consequences. We have to see it through. Standing around the group in humanised form, Havoc and Pathfinder admired Gio's determination. The Inquisitor smiled. We, the Immortals of the Avatars Guild, would like to help. But, just as we couldn't tell you what book to look for, we can now not tell you its contents. Freya felt let down and confused. But why? Pathfinder put his hand on Freya's shoulder. For the same reason, I cannot simply show you the way. Nor can Havoc fight all your battles. Sometimes it is your actions that help you understand. Gyo gazed thoughtfully into space. I think we all understand. It can be said, after all, that it is our actions that define us. We appreciate the help you have given us. We have all learned from it. I am confident that when Requiem is brought up to speed, he will find a way to open this book. Looking around with a smile on his face, he added, Besides, after nearly destroying the world and then putting it all back together again, this has got to be a cinch, right? Eurasil stared at the book in the Inquisitor's hand. Well, although I may not agree with Requiem's methods, I cannot deny that they are effective. Smiling back at Gio, Frey echoed his optimism. You're right. You're all right. What we need now is a man that can put a new spin on anything. Did you hear how he thought wallpapering should be done? With a look of indulgent admiration, she finished. Paste the walls first. 